welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel brought to you by Red Heart Yarns. In this video, I will show you how to make this super fantastic plaid Christmas throw. This throw is made using Red Heart Super Saver yarn in five different colors. And what's great about Super Saver is it comes in a multitude of colors. So if you wanna make this blanket but not make it Christmassy, you could totally do that. Actually today, I'm gonna to use alternative colors that you can see what it would look like in something a little bit different. This is a free pattern available over on redheart.com. I've put a link to that right down there in the video description box below along with the materials list. While you're in the video description box, please go ahead and smash that like button as my kids say because it encourages me to do more videos because I know you're liking what you're seeing here on the channel. Once you have your free pattern, then you gather your materials and we will be ready to jump in to make this really super easy blanket. You have the free pattern and you've gathered your materials and you're ready to get started. But before we can jump in, we have to take a look at the pattern just for a second. Your pattern looks a little bit like this, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. It has a beautiful picture of the blanket right here on the top. And so you can easily see how all the color changes are made. The other thing I want to point out is on page three of the pattern, you'll see that it has a really awesome color chart for you. Now the way you will read this color chart is this first one up here as the numbers are listed vertically, that is the chart you will use for the body of the blanket. This chart right here, as the numbers are listed horizontally, that's the chart you will use for the chains that you weave through the body of the blanket. I found that adding these charts to the pattern was really helpful for me because I'm such a visual learner that sometimes I will forget what color is supposed to be next. And if I am following along a simple little color chart like this, it's almost like paint by number for me. I'm just using yarn. So that's how you will use this little chart when it comes to colors. If you don't like to use charts, don't worry. All of the colors are also listed right here along with how many rows you will use for each one. So there are two different ways for you to accomplish the color changes in this project. The other thing I am going to point out here is that there are a lot of ends to weave in, you guys. You will not be carrying your yarn up along the sides of this blanket. So I am going to highly encourage you to get a bent tip tapestry needle. These bent tip tapestry needles are steel and they are amazing and they help you weave in your ends superbly when you're dealing with the Red Heart Super Saver yarn, which is 100% acrylic. Okay, those are the few things I wanted to make sure I mentioned here at the start. The next thing I want to mention is that you do not have to use Christmas colors to make your blanket. As I mentioned at the start, you can choose any colors you want for this blanket. Just choose five complementary colors. In today's video, I have actually wound up some different yarn from different scraps that I had laying around, and I thought these colors looked really great together. They're all super Super saver and they're a lot of fun. This is what I will be using today, but you can use any five colors you choose. Go ahead, grab your hook and let's jump in. This blanket is made up of a two-step process. The first is to make the fillet mesh, okay? That's the body of the blanket. That's sort of like the groundwork that we have to make up. And that's where I mentioned that you would follow the chart on page three with the vertical numbers. You'll notice that all of the color changes of the stitches that look like they're running in this direction are done in the fillet mesh portion. All the stitches that look like they're running vertically, those are actually just chains that are woven into the fillet fabric. So all you really need to know in order to make this blanket is a chain stitch and a double crochet. Pretty cool, right? Like I said at the start, this is all about the finishing when you're making this blanket. So let's go ahead and start off with the fillet fabric so that you can get started. Let's set this out of the way. 
For the fillet mesh, you need to chain an odd number of chains. Now, the chain amount for the actual blanket is 173, and that will get you a very large blanket. But if you wanted to change the blanket up a little bit and maybe change out how many color combinations or the sequence, you could go ahead and do that simply by chaining an odd number. For today's example, I'm just going to chain, oh, let's do 21 stitches. Once you've completed your chains, you will do a double crochet in the fifth chain from your hook. You simply yarn over your hook, go into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. You've now completed a double crochet and these skipped four chains actually count as a double crochet and a chain one. And that's important because on row two, you will be working into that, that turning chain. You then continue on and it will chain one. You will skip one chain and work a double crochet in the next chain. You'll notice in the pattern there is an asterisk next to these set of instructions. What that means is you will repeat the series of instructions from that asterisk. So once you've completed this double crochet, you will chain one, skip a chain, and then double crochet in the next chain. You continue doing this all the way down to the very end. And if you're following along with the blanket, you will be left with 171 stitches or 85 chain one spaces. Once you've completed row one, you will go ahead and turn your work. You will then move on to row two, which is chain four, three, Four. This counts as a double crochet and a chain one. And you will go ahead and you will double crochet into the next double crochet. So you find that next double crochet, go into that stitch and complete a double crochet. You will be stacking your double crochets on top of each other. That is how you complete fillet crochet. You're creating these sections of spaces, these squares that will be a space for us to insert or weave through the chains that we will work in the second part of the blanket. You'll see here I'm just chaining one after my double crochet and I'm placing double crochets in the top of each double crochet all the way down my row. When I get to the end of the row, I will go ahead and remember that this initial turning chain counted as a chain one and a double. So I will chain one, skip that first chain, and work into the chain after that. Make sure I do a double crochet in that next chain. Now, I have friends who like to just work in that chain one space instead of finding the actual chain, and you could do that if you want to, but for me, I like to work into the actual turning chain because I think it looks cleaner. You can see here, I have a nice clean line right there. After you complete row two, it's just a matter of continuing on working row two following the color sequence. So why don't we go ahead, work one more row two, and I will show you how to change colors at the end of this row. I'm to the point where I need to put a double crochet into my turning chain. I would go ahead and begin my double crochet. So I've gone into my chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, but I will pause at this point. So I've partially completed that double crochet. At this point, I would grab my next color. So for me, I'm just gonna grab this really righteous pink color. It's pretty, pretty stunning, right? And what I'm doing is I am resting the tail of the pink right next to the blue, making sure it's a nice long tail. I like to have nice long tails to weave in. And then I yarn over my hook and I will pull the pink color through instead of the blue. What that does is it finishes off the double crochet, but it also allows me to have the pink color on my hook ready to work into. At this point, I could go ahead and I could snip the blue and be done with it. I just made it just about as long as the tail I left. And I have friends who like to just do a, a simple little like tie knot right here, just a simple one just to hold it in place because they feel like it's just a little bit more secure. And then before they weave in these ends, they go back and untie that knot. What you would do here is you would carry on, 
but you would not use the blue anymore. We have the pink loop on our hook and we would carry on with our row two, starting off with a chain four and then working our double crochet into the top of the next double crochet. See how you get that really great color change, but we don't have any color bleed going on in that double crochet. And that's all there is to it when you're making the body of the blanket. It's just made up of the filet crochet. Super easy, you change colors at the end of the row. Make sure you cut your yarn. Don't carry the yarn up to the next row or to following rows when you're doing the color changes because sometimes the colors won't be there for you on the side you need it. It's just, it's more trouble than it's worth. Go ahead and cut the yarn and leave yourself a nice long tail. You guys know I like four to six inches of a tail to be able to weave in later, especially when I'm doing projects like this where there are so many tails to be woven in and it's something that's gonna be used continuously and possibly be washed more often than something else because it is a blanket, okay? What I wanna do now is I wanna show you how I would weave in those tails as you're going along. Don't wait to the very end to weave in your tails, okay? I'm gonna show you how to weave in your tails now. Remember at the start, I mentioned that the bent tip tapestry needle is really going to help you a lot. And this is one of the places it will. I've gone ahead and I've made a really great swatch and I've already woven in some of the chains and we'll get to that part. But I've left these two tails open, okay? I've left these two tails here so that way I can show you how to weave them in. What I like to do when I'm weaving in tails like this is I like to take the color of the tail and make sure I'm weaving it in through the same color in the body of the of the fabric. So I will go ahead and thread this green yarn directly into the eye of my tapestry needle. And what I wanna do now is take this and coming back through that green stitch there and working through the red to come back over here to this other green. Can you see I've done, I've just come through those stitches. I'm gonna pull that tail this direction. Now what I like to do when I'm working filet crochet is cut through the yarn and the post of that double crochet, okay? It's the second one in. And I bring my yarn up. Now I will cut through the yarn here and through the yarn up above and then come back this direction working through the red and cutting through all of this green coming back to where I began, okay? So I came this direction. At this point, I give everything a nice little tug to make sure I'm not pulling it too tightly so that it distorts the actual fabric. And when I get to this point, what do you think I do? That's right, I simply go back down this post stitch and I go through the yarn itself again because I feel like it traps it all in. And by going in this, the, this direction, this way, this way, this way, this way, I have already secured this pretty well, right? But what I like to do is go back up this one, okay? So I've just come down, and what I'm gonna do is go back through those stitches and work my way back up the post one last time. It's my ultimate sense of security, just to make sure that is all woven in. Now, when I come back and put an edging on this edge, I will just work around that entire post and it will encapsulate any extras that might be wanting to pop out. And I am nice and, um, and confident in that so I can snip the yarn and be done with it. Let's go ahead and do the same thing up here with the red. And what might be confusing with some people is they're like, well, wait a second, you've just done all of that right here. Where are you gonna put this red? Well, remember, I said we wanna make sure you're weaving your tail in through the same color as the um, yarn in your fabric. So what I will do here is instead of popping it back through those stitches going that direction, let's pop this up and go this way. Let's go up through our post like we did the green coming down. And I'm gonna come up here and you'll see this little post here is a little bit thick because that's where I wove this tail end in. So I'm bringing that up. I'm gonna come into this direction, 
more than anything, this just shows you the possibilities of how to weave in your ends so that they don't come undone. And then for this, I'm not gonna go all the way around in the full square, okay? Let's maybe come down this post, all right? And then I am gonna go back up this post and just pop my way back this way. So now I have gone the multi multiple directions like I did the last one, but it's just slightly different and this is not going anywhere. There is no way that it's gonna come undone. I snip it, get rid of my tail, and my ends are nice and woven in. Pretty, 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 pretty. I love it when my ends are nicely woven in. Now, I'm gonna show you something that I'm not very proud of. I had my blanket done by a contractor and she did not take the time to weave in the ends. So I wanna show you a cautionary tale. For those of you who are like, I hate weaving in ends, I'm just gonna work over them, it's gonna look just fine. Let me show you how awful it looks. telling you I'm not proud of this at all. All right, so I'm gonna put this down here. Now take a look, here we are. This is the edge of my blanket. And you can see where she went around with the edging, right? And look, it looks like really thick and clumpy. And then the minute I kind of put this over, look, there's already ends falling out and ends coming through here. I mean, look, look how awful that is. And you know what's sad is that if this were a gift that you were making for somebody, or maybe it's on display and your whole family's coming over for Christmas and you have this out, like it's going to be something really just beautiful that you're having, um, you know, to show your work. And this is what they see. This is, this is more of the, you know, not very nice hobby look, right? You really want your stuff to look pristine and, and just beautiful. And so you really need to take that extra time to weave in your ends. Don't do this. Don't just crochet over your ends and think it's gonna be okay and look normal because it really doesn't. On top of that, when you go to do your edging, make sure that your edges do not start to already ripple and, and roll on themselves as you're going along because that just doesn't make make it look any better as well. All right, all right, so I've shown you my embarrassing moment, so now you won't have one, right? Okay, let's do, let's do a pinky swear. Let's pinky swear, we're all going to use our bent tip tapestry needles and we're gonna weave in our ends. And I will say that I really, really religiously weave in my ends as I go along. So I, I like to do maybe, oh, about 10 inches, and then I, t I put my work down and I weave in my ends. And then I work 10 inches and I weave in my ends, just so I'm not not waiting to the very end because who wants to do that? That is no fun. All right, we're done with the, the, the awful weaving in the ends talk for now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into how we are going to add the beautiful vertical chains to the fillet fabric. Okay, once again, let's take a look at my little piece of fillet fabric. I started off down here and worked my way up into this direction, and I just followed a fun color sequence. I did five blues, one white, two red, one green, two red, one white, five blues, okay? And then once I was done with that, I wove in my ends, and I was deciding how long do these chains have to be? So obviously, if I were to tell you make your chains X number of inches, it might be that you are getting a slightly different gauge or you've adjusted the chain amount or you decided not to make the blanket as big as I, I suggested to. So here's how you really kind of guesstimate how long you need to make your chains. What I did was put my slip knot on my hook and I began to chain. And I would count my chains as I went along and then I would periodically set them down on my fabric without pulling them tight. I didn't pull them tight like this. I just set them down and then I would chain some more and I set it down and then I chained some more and what I did was I wanted to make enough chains that I went past the edge of my fabric it's about two inches we could actually check that out Yep, it's two inches past the edge of my fabric. Now for the blanket, you might wanna go a little bit further just because you have more fabric you're weaving through, but for my little swatch, the two inches worked. 
What I did at that point was I made sure I kept track of the end that I finished off my chains, okay? So I made my chains, I started here, and I went in this direction. And then when I finished my chains, I cut my yarn, again, leaving a nice long tail. And then on the tail end, the one I just cut, I threaded that tail through my bent tip tapestry needle, okay? And you guys are gonna realize how genius this is here in a minute. Once I've done that, I've now signified, okay, Marley, you know this is the end that is going to unravel easily, right? Because we've already made the chains longer than they need to be. We wanna make sure that we have the end that is easiest to unravel at the top, so that way we can unravel it, right? So what I did at this point is I took the opposite end, the one that I began with, and I found the point in the blanket where I was going to be weaving my tail or my, and I found the point in the blanket that I was going to be weaving my chain through the filet crochet. And I tied it right there with a knot. That's right. I tied it with a knot really nice and secure right there to that chain one space opening. Once I did that, it was time to weave my chains through the fabric. Now, the, the direction of the chains, you wanna begin with an over and then an under, over, under, over, under, over, under, so on and so forth, okay? So on this one, you can see right here, I went under this first one last time, so it's time to start over for this one. So let's go ahead and using my white that I've already tied into my chain one space, I'm going to thread the tail onto my tapestry needle and I'm going to begin. So I'm going over this one, under this one, over that one, under that one, over, under, over, under. Now I am not going through the stitches. I'm simply weaving in and out through those chain one spaces. As I got going a little ways, I decided I would pull this through until not see if I did this see how super tight that is that's never gonna look good okay because it's never going to be that way so what you want to do is make sure you're pulling it just to the point where the chains are resting comfortably on top of the fillet crochet once you've pulled them through a little ways you can go ahead and continue on so this would be over under over under over under I'm gonna pull through a little bit Again, I just wanna make sure that they're resting on there nice and comfortably, so I go back and I just adjust them, okay? And then I would continue on, over, under, over, and then pull that through, okay? Now, this is where I just left these. I left these longer. You can see all my extra chains are down here just laying there all comfortable. The reason I did that is because I wanna make sure that after the whole blanket is complete, I can set it down and just make sure that I can stretch the blanket and all of my chains are at a nice tension, okay? I don't want any of them accidentally being too tight um, because it just doesn't look very nice, okay? So I left these like this. So we can go ahead and do this last one. This is where I have my really pretty pink color. I thought it would be nice. So let's show you how to do that one more time. So I've thread it onto my needle. I'm gonna come down here. You can actually use your hook for this if you want. You could just pull that loop through and you simply, you can see here, I'm literally making a knot, okay? So I've, I've twisted those colors, can you see? Hopefully you can see what I've done here. And I'm just going to use my hook here to help me pull that through. And I'm literally just tying a knot right there at the edge, okay? Now, you can see here I've already made a mistake. I've tied this knot too far away from that edge, so I don't like that. So all I have to do, because I've just done a simple overhand knot, is undo this knot, and make sure that when I am bringing this knot closed, it's nice and close to the first chain of my chain. See, that's much better. And that's going to look so much better in the finished product. Here we go. It's all about the finishing, people. So we went over this one, so we're gonna go under here. So under, over, under, over, 
under, over, under, over, under, over, under. I'm going further this time. Over, under. Let's see if we can make it the whole way. Let's see. That was under, over, under, over, under. Ah! All right. So here we are. Oh, goodness. I didn't make it. I let go. Over, under, over, under. Okay, don't let go. And pull all the way. Oh, my needle came out, but that's okay. And let's continue pulling so that they all come up where I need them to be. So now it's too tight. Can you see even right here how it's pulling a little bit down here and not over here? It's because these are not resting on there comfortably. They are a little bit too snug because I tried to get too many um, down the row before I stopped. And now I think, let's see. I think I'm comfortable with that. I think that looks pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. And let's pull this white here. Pull that there. Make sure everything is nice and neat. It's all about these finishing touches. And there you go. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so cool? I just love this so much. The first time I ever saw this technique done was with Jenny King, who is an amazing crochet designer. If you had not had a chance to check out some of Jenny King's designs, you absolutely need to do that. But I saw her do this, and that was when I decided I needed to make a plaid blanket for myself. I love these colors. The Christmas one is definitely going to be set out during Christmas. Even with all the flubs, I'm going to love it anyways. But uh, it's, it's fantastic right and it's super easy once you've reached this point what do you think you do I gave you a clue earlier remember when I said we wanted to make sure that down here at this end we were able to easily undo these chains so all you would do here is you would undo that final pull through that final finish off that you did and you would work your way back undoing those knots or undoing those chains, I should say. And then what you can do here is you can finish off with a simple knot around the edge or kind of like a, a slip knot right here around the edge. All I've done is I just took it up to the edge and then just did a slip knot, tying it into place at the top now. Okay, and I didn't tie it double tied or anything like that because I want to be able to go back and uh, adjust if I need to once everything's done. But once everything's done, I can then take this tail and I have a choice. I can either weave it in down my chain here or I can add some tassels. So if I add tassels into this space with the chain one in the same color as the chains that I did down the row, I don't have to spend time weaving in more ends. Pretty cool, right? It's not a cool trick. So as long as it's secure and it's not gonna come undone, I say add those tassels, add that fringe, do something fun. But that's it, okay? You wanna see me do that one more time? I'm gonna just undo the last chain of this white. I'm going to come down, maybe right there, put it on my hook, and then I'm just going to work like a slip stitch around that final, that final section right there, right? So if I wanted to here, I could just pull out, finish off, give it a nice tug, and it's joined, it's completed. Isn't that fun? It's so easy. So as far as how long should your chain lengths be, I, I say make them long enough that it will give you um, some room to have some slacks that you can adjust, okay? Now here's what's really cool. If you've taken the time to weave in your ends, like I know you have, you don't really need to add an edging to the side of the blanket because it looks really nice and neat as is. But if you wanna add that edging, it's really quite simple. All you'll do is grab your edging color, whatever you want it to be, and join that color in the bottom corner with a slip stitch. Once you've done that slip stitch, go ahead and chain one, and you will work a single crochet evenly all the way up this edge. Now remember, these, these uh, stitches are all double crochets, and I like to put two single crochets for each double crochet 
periodically throwing in just one single crochet for the double crochet. And remember, you just want to make sure you're setting it down and looking at your fabric to make sure it doesn't ripple. Okay, so you want to make sure that as you're doing your edging, it's as even as possible. And it doesn't have to be, okay, I'm doing two here, one here, two here, one here. You can mix and match it however you need it to be. Just lay your work down and make sure it's not rippling on you because that's unsightly. So as you're going along here, you just fill in all of those double crochets and that's all I'm doing. I, as I mentioned, I like to do two singles into each double, but then I will set it down and just check my work. I just want to set it down and make sure nothing's rippling, nothing's getting pulled too much. You can see there, that looks really nice. And you'll simply do that edging all the way up one side and then reverse it and come all the way back the opposite side. And that's it. I told you this blanket is super easy. It uses really simple stitches and it's all about the finishing. As long as you weave in your ends and you take the time to thread your chains through the chain one spaces and make sure that they're laid through really nice and not pulled really taut, you'll have an awesome blanket. I cannot wait to see the color combinations all of you come up with. I already have many in my own brain. I mean, just like, it's crazy. I'll actually put a couple of the color combinations that I would love to see in the video description box below. I'll put a link to my blog post. Um, if you want to follow along with me or share your progress, I would love to see it. You can follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Snapchat, and of course right here on YouTube. You can hit subscribe so that you're up to date whenever there's a new video released. I'm Marley Bird, proud spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns, and I hope you will come back again and join me here for better crochet and knitting lessons. Thanks, bye. Hey, don't leave yet. I'm sure there are other videos here that you will enjoy. Go ahead and check out some of my knitting and crochet videos as well as some of my crafting videos. You will love them, I promise. If you hit subscribe, you'll be up to date whenever there's a new video released. And as my kids say, don't forget to smash that like button. Bye.